Hello, welcome to Canadian Independent Media. It's September 24th, 2017. Uh, our stories this week, public health care, cannabis, proportional voting, and Mother Nature is giving us a message. Our first story is about the corporate attack on public health care in Canada. The media often tells us how bad things are in our hospitals. When Meredith McClurg pressed record, she had no idea how long it would go. Bed after patient filled bed, lining the emergency hallways of Surrey Memorial Hospital. And there is no doubt they often are bad. People have been suffering and dying for years while waiting for treatment. People sometimes wait weeks, months and years to see a specialist and get the care they are told they need. It can take months to get an MRI and often many months or even years to get scheduled into a hospital for treatment. But why do we have these long waits? In my opinion, it's because the corporations that run Canada have screwed up our health care system so we would lose faith in it and they could privatize it. And how did they do it? Simple. They got their politicians to close hospital beds. Because if the beds are always full, it becomes very difficult to get into a hospital. So people have to wait because there aren't enough beds. According to government numbers, Canada went from 179,000 beds in 1990 to 115,000 beds in 2003. In other words, between 1990 and 2003, our politicians closed more than one-third of all the hospital beds in Canada while our population went up by four million people. And there's reason to believe that the number of hospital beds has gone from 115,000 back then to under 100,000 now, while the population has gone up by millions more. And these hospital beds were not closed to save money. The beds were closed to screw up our health care system so Canadians would lose faith in it, so it could be privatized. The people who have waited and suffered and died were just collateral damage in the corporate war on public health care. As the story says, there is no doubt we have too few hospital beds, and this has resulted in cancelled surgeries, long waits in emergency rooms, and patients languishing in hallways. All the problems we have. So the lack of beds is the underlying cause of the waits and emergency room chaos. It is not public health care that's the problem, but a deliberate shortage of beds. And a shortage of beds is a fixable problem. It could have been fixed long ago. We probably would have saved money if we had fixed the problem. And hundreds of thousands of Canadians would have gotten treated much, much better. We can open more beds and the waits would be ended. But that won't happen because corporate Canada wants private health care in Canada and therefore public health care must be destroyed. And causing people to suffer and die is a very good way to do that. And the move to privatize health care never stops. We should maybe be asking ourselves why the corporate media continues to ignore an important part of the story they've covered all summer. The story they've covered is about the fires, floods and droughts that have been happening around the world. We're seeing disaster after disaster and the media is covering it in great detail. Hi there, I'm Lori Graham and here's a look at your national weather forecast and we're going to kick things off once again today in the tropics where we have three named storms. We've got Tropical Depression Lee, which is not expected to have any impact on land. We also have Maria and Jose and we're going to start things off with Maria, now a major category. So this is a category. But what they are not talking about is the fact that we have to change. There is no question about that. We can't have this corporate industrial lifestyle we now live in. It's killing us and it's killing our planet. Here in Canada, we need to begin an immediate nationwide discussion about where do we go from here? Do we want electric cars? Or do we want to go right past that idea and move to comfortable and efficient public transportation? 
What about tourism and air travel? Can we afford to fly to Vegas for the weekend anymore? What about agriculture and industry? Our governments and media seem to be more interested in the maximization of corporate profit than in saving our planet. So it is really up to us citizens. And I eagerly hope some positive changes will be coming soon from somewhere within our leadership. Good things are happening in many places, but if we want to save ourselves, we need much more and much faster. Here in British Columbia, we may be moving to a proportional voting system. I've often heard people suggest that it's going to be difficult to vote in a proportional voting system. Kind of complicated. Anyway, here's how difficult it is to vote in the proportional voting system they use in Germany. Here's an example of a ballot. I'm done. And what I did was to vote for my own directly elected representative, just as we do in Canada. In the German PR system, everybody has their own MP or MLA in their own riding, just as in Canada. And the German voting system is also very proportional. So if 10% of the citizens vote for party A, those 10% of voters will get 10% of the seats in the parliament. And 30% of the voters will get 30% of the seats. So this German system is very easy to use, as you saw, and it's also very proportional. So if people tell you that PR voting is tough, don't believe them. And now I'm going to vote again, just to show you. Done. That's how easy it is. And it's proportional. And you also elect your own Member of Parliament or MLA. And most importantly, I think it's more democratic, which is why I support proportional voting. Personally, I think cannabis is a great plant with a thousand positive uses. Even George Washington grew it. The media, however, is very worried about cannabis. Here's the Globe and Mail telling us how dangerous it can be, and the Vancouver Sun telling us there is no solid evidence that it is safe and effective as a medical treatment. So using the term medical marijuana is a misnomer. And CTV telling us that we should wait longer. I appreciate the media's concern for our health and safety, but I wonder why they are so concerned about this plant that has been around for thousands of years, but so unconcerned about so many other things. Here, for example, is the Globe and Mail telling us that GMOs are safe. No safety worries there. And although a lot of Canadians are worried about fracking, the media seldom talks about that too. No worries there either. And there's also not much concern about this in the media. Or this. The media is not even worried about California farmers using fracking wastewater to irrigate their crops. So I wonder why the media pretends to be so concerned about cannabis ruining our health and our society when they don't seem to care about big business doing it to us in a thousand different ways. Thanks for watching Canadian Independent Media. Help us spread the word. Tell your friends.